On April 28th this year, I released a video stating that a new record for an Australian Salty was unearthed, as I found pictures and footage of its existence. This particular crocodile was stated to be 20 feet 2 inches long by Guinness, but due to part of the tail being missing, it was thought to be around 21 feet long by the hunters who killed it. Since finding out about the record crocodile, I discovered more information about this crocodile's capture and the verification process of being a Guinness record, much of it coming from the book Crocodile Safari Man by Keith Adams. Concerning the crocodile's capture, it was hunted at night while Keith, Audrey, and Margaret were hunting crocs in their 11-foot boat. As soon as the croc was close to them, about 5 feet below the surface, a harpoon was fired at the crocodile. This is when the trouble started. Quote, all hell broke loose. A colossal reptile burst into action. There was little time to grab the harpoon cord and turn the boat around before the cord was fully extended. The monster jerked the bow so quickly that I only narrowly averted plunging overboard. The massive crocodile was in full control of the boat and it moved the boat however it liked. Once the crocodile stopped, the group waited about 60 minutes until the crocodile decided to swim off again. After some time, the crocodile decided to bring only its snout up to the surface to breathe, but the crocodile's head was in a vertical position, with the back of the head about two feet under the water. Keith tried to shoot the crocodile's head, trying to hit the brain underwater, but it didn't work. The crocodile got angry and swam around more, with Keith trying to shoot the crocodile, but nothing worked. At this point, the group was two miles away from where they initially harpooned the crocodile. After three hours of struggling and waiting, a great number of bubbles came to the surface. After pulling on the cord attached to the harpoon, it was evident the crocodile was dead. Quote, the crocodile had chosen to drown itself rather than be captured. Although we had met the challenge and were the victors, the outcome gave us no pleasure at all. All we felt was sadness. The crocodile was much too heavy to pull to the surface because of the steep bank, so by using the dinghy's anchor and with the girls rowing hard, we slid the carcass along the riverbed to the other side, where a gradual slope aided our effort in beaching it. Once daylight came, the group was able to really see just how big of a crocodile it was. The head of the crocodile was severed and the skin of the crocodile was preserved. In my previous video, I stated that I wasn't sure if this skin and head was of the supposed 20-footer, and now I can say it is. In Keith's book, this photo is shown with the caption, quote, 1948 Buick with preserved remains of 20-foot crocodile with my wife, two children, and Margaret. As for the verification of the crocodile's length, it seems that researchers tied to Guinness were the ones to verify the length of this crocodile. In regards to this crocodile's size, Keith in his book stated the length of the crocodile was not recorded at the initial capture due to no tape measure being present. Quote, no tape was available to record the exact measurements, so that remained unconfirmed until years later when the head and the skin were examined and measured in London by the Guinness Book of Records. Their estimate was first recorded in the 1979 edition at 20 feet 2 inches. I looked at the 1979 Guinness Book and it stated, quote, the holder of the official record is a 20 foot 2 inch bull harpooned by Mr. Keith Adams in the MacArthur River near Boralula in Northern Australia on June 26, 1960. Now there's a few things we need to discuss with this information. First off, we need to state if the length given by Guinness is an estimation accounting for the missing section of tail, or if it is only of the skin and head. In a 1984 Guinness book about animals, it references another crocodile with a similar circumstance of just a skin and head being measured. That crocodile I'm referring to is of the Fly River Croc, which is the official record of any modern crocodilian at 20 feet 4 inches long. However, as part of the tail was missing on the skin, the estimated size of the crocodile was thought to be at least 20 feet 8 inches long by the scientists who measured the crocodile. So what measurement was reported by Guinness? Well, they went with a 20 foot 4 inch measurement. Therefore, we can assume Guinness only measures and reports what can be tangibly measured, so it seems the combined skin and head of Adam's crocodile is 20 feet 2 inches. Something that must be considered about this length though is the condition of the skin being measured. The skin of the giant seems to have already been processed and tanned by the time it was sent to Guinness, so it's possible the skin was already stretched a bit by this point. Based on this photo here and some calculations I made, 
If the skin and head combined are 20 feet 2 inches long, the skin appears to be around 17 feet, give or take. If the skin is stretched and we assume the true length of this croc skin plus head measurement has a difference of 6% from its true body length, like in American alligators, that would mean the crocodile was actually a little under 19 feet with the missing tail. However, even if the skin was indeed stretched, Keith claimed 18 inches of the crocodile's tail was missing, so this crocodile would still be a 20 footer if this is accounted for. Based on this one photo, about 12 single road scoots, give or take, are present. Saltwater crocodiles normally have about 18 of these, so a good chunk of the tail was missing, thus making its true length considerably larger. In addition to all of this, in regards to the skin plus head measurement by Guinness, Keith actually thought the length by Guinness was, quote, a bit exaggerated, but not by much. Considering we don't know how exactly Guinness lined up the head of the crocodile to the skin, it's hard to determine how accurate they were, but it's interesting that Keith believed this. The only question left is how much does Keith think the measurements were exaggerated by? Was it just by a couple inches, or does he think the skin plus head was around 19 feet instead? A couple more things must be noted too, one of which is extremely important. The first one is minor, but it should be noted that the dates for when Guinness and Keith say the crocodile was caught are conflicting. In Keith's book, he puts the story of the croc's capture in the 1955 section of his book, but Guinness reported the capture took place in 1960. Considering the footage of the crocodile was included in the Northern Safari documentary, which takes place in 1955, I'll consider this year to be the accurate one. The next thing I find weird is that while Keith stated in his book that the crocodile's length was not measured after being captured, the documentary gave a very specific measurement of 3 meters around the girth. This makes it seem like Keith did make some measurements of the crocodile on his own at some point but didn't consider them official measurements. In the film, it stated the crocodile is nearly 6.5 meters in length, which considering the skin only measures 20 feet 2 inches according to Guinness, I'm assuming this length includes the missing bit of tail. In the book, Keith states his opinion of 18 inches missing off the tail. If this opinion is correct, we could use this to estimate the length of the crocodile. While we don't know what exact measurement is nearly 6.5 meters, let's assume it's anywhere from 6.4 to 6.49 meters. Based on this, if we were to subtract 18 inches, that would mean the tangible length of this crocodile was around 19 feet. That would mean that even if only a little over 6 inches of the tail was truly missing, this crocodile would still be a 20 footer if you account for the tail. If this 19 foot measurement is accurate as well, this would aid to Keith's opinion that Guinness slightly exaggerated their skin plus head measurement. Basically, whether or not you accept the Guinness measurement, this crocodile was very long and seemed to have been over 20 feet if you account for the missing part of its tail. Still, comparing the skin of this croc to the Fly River Giant makes it appear more that this crocodile was on the thinner side for being so long. Bottom line, although exact details are missing or muddied when it comes to this crocodile, the official third party measurement by Guinness experts still stands at 20 feet 2 inches for the head and skin. This is the only tangible measurement we can work with. Still, I think it's safe to say that if we at least include the missing piece of tail, this was a 20 foot monster. Perhaps more will come out soon about this monster croc and have it more solidified as a giant. To learn more about the animals you just saw, buy my book, What We Get Wrong About Crocodilians. It examines claims of giant crocodiles, a World War II massacre, their regenerating tails, alligators and sewers, their record land speeds, and more. The book looks at a variety of subjects many people, including experts, get wrong about these animals, and I desperately wanted to dispel the myths that have persisted so long. Buy What We Get Wrong About Crocodilians in physical or digital formats. Link in bio, comments, or description to buy.